I have found myself in northern Gotland. Uh, I suppose I have to give a bit of background as to how I got here. Uh, so I'm researching my matriline right now. I'm at the very last stop in my ancestral journey of um, this trip. So I'm looking into the birthplaces of my great-grandparents. Uh, Charles Brandine and Laura Maria uh, Stolhanska, yeah, who went by Mai, and she was from Gotland. Uh, I have to start by saying that this line has been the most difficult for me to research um, because I grew up in foster care. I was disconnected from uh, my mother's, well, my whole family really, except for my aunt. Um, and uh, because I don't have a good relationship with my mother or her mother, um, I haven't been able to ask any questions. Um, we did have a very good, luckily, we did have a very good family historian, uh, my grandmother's sister Elsa, who kept quite good records, but unfortunately she died in 2012 before I became interested in learning about where I come from. Um, so I'm not sure what happened to any of her records. Uh, I know that she had letters and old photos, but I don't know what happened to them. Uh, the only thing that I did know was that I was Swedish, essentially. Um, I knew that my great-grandparents were from Sweden. I never met my great-grandfather because he was 20 years older than my great-grandmother. He died in 63, long before I was born. Um, I didn't even really know their names. All I knew was that my great-grandmother, well, I called her Mai. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know where they came from. I didn't know their names. I didn't know their birthdays or anything. So I'm literally starting this line from zero. <laughs> um, and then um, I didn't have any help from um, my mother or her mother who passed away last year. Um, and Elsa passed away in 2012. The only person in the whole world that I could have any help from was um, my sister's only full sibling, uh, my aunt, um, uh, who um, uh, didn't really know anything. Um, so that was quite unhelpful as well. <laughs> um, when Elsa passed away, I inherited a copy of her family tree. Uh, so um, I did have that to go on finally. So I was able to see her mother's line, um, uh, Laura Maria Stolhanska. Um, so then I was able to find her name and birthday and where she was born in Gotland. Uh, but the family tree on her father's side was blank, quite uh, frustratingly. <laughs> um, but luckily, I was able to um, find some Swedish relatives. So I, I, I had seen that my aunt had uh, made a family trip to um, to Sweden um, to meet our relatives here. So, um, so I knew that we had relatives, living relatives in Sweden. Um, but I. Uh, uh, was a unable to find contact information from them for them from my aunt, um, and so I had to find them myself. <laughs> so I um, booked a ticket to Sweden <laughs> um, to Gotland uh, and showed up <laughs> um, in the hopes that maybe I might find someone. And so I I found their names through my aunt's Facebook profile and googled their phone number and called them and uh, they were very happy to hear from me and they gave me the phone number 
to uh, my grandmother's second cousin who lives on Gotland six months of the year and then I called her and said hello I'm Tamara from Canada uh, your long-lost relative <laughs> and uh, and she said, oh, I know all about you. Um, your aunt has told me um, so much about you. And I said, oh, I've never, I've never heard of you before. Um, I never knew you existed. <laughs> but luckily she knew about me. And so, um, and so uh, yesterday was my first uh, real day on Gotland. And, um, and I called her first thing in the morning and she picked me up just after lunch and took me to their summer home here in Northern Gotland. That's the guest cabin. And in front of me is their house. I guess you can, you can only see the wall. <laughs> That's Aka. <laughs> her husband, Aka. And... <laughs> And um, they have so they have generously let me stay um, here with them, and they're going to show me around today to the uh, to some of our family homes and um, the graveyard where my great grandparent great great grandparents are born. And we had an amazing night last night going over our um, family history notes because my grandmother's second cousin is also a family history buff. So. If you're into family history, um, it can be quite frustrating trying to get people um, to help you on your journey. But when you do find another relative who's also interested in family history, it's like like finding a pot of gold. It's it's um, it's not only amazing for um, the information that you find, but it's also a really great feeling to find someone who's also interested in what you're interested in. Uh, so I found all sorts of interesting stuff last night and I think she feels the same way. Um, yeah. Better get ready. Um, we're about to leave the house on our big adventure today. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll see you later. Okay, so I am at Tingsdala. It is a military base where my great-great-grandfather Nils Thomas Stolhanska, who went by Thomas, uh, was the chief officer here and he lived with my great-great-grandmother Matilda and my great-grandmother's brother my great-great-uncle my great-uncle um, Nils was born here um, so we're just gonna take a little look and he was born we have the map here so he was born let's see there is the steeple and he was born in this house here. Say hi. hi. Okay. Hello. This Hello. is <laughs> Alka and Ava, <laughs> my grandmother's second cousin and her husband. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hi. <laughs> hi. How are you? And the White House over there, Nils is born, and they were living. Oh, in the White House. Yeah. It's quite a big house, really. Okay. So that would have been his. Um, like the military house that was yeah he was in the, like given uh, to like the residence was over there yeah in this place mm. yeah uh huh and is that the house with the guy who yeah <laughs> can you explain the story <laughs> when I went there to see yeah my two months until I was living yeah um, he came out a man with a gun <laughs> and said what are you doing here <laughs> yeah <laughs> we got a bit of bed but yeah. he confirmed that Stolhanska had lived in this house okay so and that's it yeah so then we have to move. Yeah, so we know that he lived in this house here, but we're not going to go down no. <laughs> because we have respect for our own lives. Yes. <laughs> Best methods will be violated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoot first, ask questions later, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> we have made it to the church in Vesterhade. How do you pronounce it? Vesterhade. Vesterhade. And this is the church where my great-great-grandparents are buried. So we're just going to have a look and see some of the family stones. Okay, so we found the gravestone of my great-great-grandparents.
I just have a few minutes to finish up in Sweden. Um, behind me is Kalmar Castle, um, quite beautiful. Uh, yeah, so my great grandmother was Laura Maria uh, Stolhanska, who went by Mai or Gimai to us. Um, and uh, she, her father died when she was 18 years old, and a lot of her family had already gone over to England. So shortly after he passed away, she went to England. Her mother's father was, at the time, he was appointed. Um, he was the, I'm not sure what the translation is, but the mayor, something like the mayor of Gotland at the time. Most of her family went to, well, her brother, her only sibling, her brother, stayed in Gotland. And um, their house is still there and it's still owned by the family. And then she went, because she went to England to see her mother, who had gone to see her sister. So when she got to England, she found that she was unable to get any work in England at the time. They went to uh, Harrogate in Yorkshire. So then she heard that Canada was a good place to go. <laughs> and so she hopped on a boat and went to um, Canada um, all by herself, all paid for by herself. And... Um, then she met my great-grandfather and they had their three children, um, one of whom was my grandmother. Uh, she and her husband uh, helped set up the Swedish press, um, which is now the world's largest Swedish language newspaper uh, or magazine. And um, she wrote articles under the name Rupsignala, uh, which means smoke signals. And, um, yeah, uh, this, um, we still have quite a bit of family in Sweden on her side, on the Stolhanska side and the Poinant side, um, particularly the Stolhanska. Um, it's, it's, a, it's pretty, um, um, upsetting for me, um, because, uh, I found out that a lot of, or some of those family members really wanted to meet me, um, and uh, nobody um, got some shade. <laughs> um, there, or some sun. Um, nobody told me that they wanted to meet me, and <sighs> yeah, it's um, if I knew that there were Swedish relatives that wanted to meet me, I would have done everything possible um, to make that happen. And I'm, I'm really glad that I got to meet them now. And I, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been like really super, super wonderful um, to meet my Swedish relatives. Um, <laughs> Said, it's just really happy and yeah. I, I really have to run to get a train to Copenhagen and say goodbye to Sweden <laughs> um, uh, this is um, my last video uh, I'm finished with my ancestry and um, uh, I'll um, probably um, be coming back here because there's a bunch of um, family heirlooms that they're going to um, give to me but uh, it's a uh, It'll take some time to sort through them, so I have to come back. I get to come back. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been um, a really incredible journey. Uh, and, um, yeah. Bye! <laughs>